Welcome to the online worship service for the First Federated Church of Peoria on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. I am David Ezekiel, transitional pastor. So glad that you've joined in. For the members of the church, the annual meeting of the congregation occurs on December 20th. And also, we are very grateful for the support that you, our members and friends, have given to First Federated through your time, your talent, and your treasure. journeying with the themes of Advent, and we will light a candle to begin our time together. And the theme of today's worship service is peace, and we will invite God to help us find peace for our lives and for our world. And so that you may be able to participate fully, you are invited to have a candle at hand to light as our leaders call us to worship and light the fourth candle of the Advent wreath. Do feel free to pause this broadcast so that you might get a candle to light. And when you light your candle, along with our leaders, sit back and hold it for a moment and you will feel a sense of peace begin to settle in. In this church at First Federated here in Peoria, we realize that without the light of Christ in our lives, the world would be a dark and dreary place. And we look for ways to take that light into the world to shatter the darkness with the radiance of God's love. And we invite you to let your light shine with ours so that we can together be a beacon of hope in the world. Get your candles ready and let's enter into worship as our leaders call us to ignite the flame of peace within us. saves the people from all that would extinguish it, has been there from the beginning. The word is made flesh and dwells among us. The, this rain is now. Will we believe it? Will we continue to put flesh on it, embodying the peace meant for all humanity? I believe in the light that has come and is coming. We see the star rising, we hear the glad tidings, and we know we are not alone. Holy One, thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of peace on earth. Even in the midst of fear of challenge, of struggle, even when we aren't sure that goodwill among us can be found, ignite the flame of peace within us that might glow with its brilliance from inside out. For I believe in the light that has come and is coming and that God will help us face the pain of life and embrace the assurance that light is already here and always coming. Amen. Amen.
There are two scripture readings for our message today. The first one comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 9, which states, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You, O God, have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second reading comes from the gospel according to John. Listen as I read from the chapter 1. As John affirms the majesty of God's creation in Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh, but of God. And the word indeed became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, his glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
as we approach the celebration of the incarnation of God in Christ at Christmas. Our ears are already filled with the festive, majestic words of the season. Shalom, glad tidings to all, peace on earth, wise men still seek him. The greatest gift of all, for unto us a son is born, a child is given. Silent night, holy night, behold the star, joy to the world. Our focus for today is on that description of Jesus as the Prince of Peace. I am David Ezekiel, and I will lead us in learning how to reflect Jesus' peace to the world around us. And the message is entitled, I Believe in Peace by Illuminating Peace. But first, let us ask God to illuminate our minds and our souls at this time. Lord God of all the nations, we have seen the star of your glory rising in splendor. The radiance of your incarnate word pierces the night that covers the earth and signals the dawn of justice and peace. May his brightness illumine our lives and beckon all nations to walk as one in your light. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen and amen. A core component of our Advent services interweaves an inscription found on the wall of a cellar in the city of Cologne, Germany, after World War II. In that dark and drab and dreary place, a number of Jews had hidden themselves during the war, fearing what might be next for them. But in the midst of that darkness, a spark of light was found within, and some anonymous author scroll, scrawled on the wall these immortal words that expressed a deep within sentiment. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. I believe in love, even when feeling it not. And I believe in God, even when he is silent. The anonymous author somehow found a measure of peace within that sustained those in the cellar during a time of intense fear and deep uncertainty. That poet of the soul discovered a light that shattered the darkness, that allowed him or her to stare into the gaping maw of death and hell with both assurance and peace. The people who have walked in darkness, have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Those are the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah long ago to people living in anxiety, fear, and despair, people feeling bereft of security, safety, and any sense of God's presence. And we hear these words at Christmas, forgetting that they were first spoken hundreds of years before the birth we celebrate. Human beings across this planet still yearn to know that a more gracious and divine reality is active and evident in our lives. The birth we celebrate is meant for this world mired in darkness and fear, yet it also becomes easier to discover in a tiny voice crying in protest over being cold and wet and hungry. We hear that cry in the midst of wars, ravages, and conflicts around the globe, in the rubble of hurricane and earthquake, in the demeaning of chronic poverty, behind prison bars, in the hospital rooms with the rhythmic pulsating hissing sounds of ventilators. That flickering of hope surges as the world turns to investigate this surprising new life, one heart at a time. The light grows as hearts catch fire with the same light that illumines the stars, pulsing hope and new life, even out of black holes. Those who search in dark and despair, in dank dungeon and deep devastation, We'll find divine light given for the world. 
light that will not be put out, so long as any creature remains to receive it, until and beyond the end of time. The darkness will never put it out. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not and cannot overcome it. That's how the disciple John articulated it. Familiar, comforting words that remind us that God's light has shined on those who live in deep darkness. That God has brought joy to people living under oppression. For a child has been born to us. The name of that child is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And God is bringing an endless peace through an heir to the throne of David. The coming of this Prince of Peace will mean the end of all signs of war and violence. Occupied people, as well as those hunkered down in their homes, will finally live in peace without anxiety about who or what will confront them the next time they go out their front door. Those who have had burdens laid upon their shoulders have been waiting for this child, whose birth transformed the yoke of oppression into a mantle of authority. They are promised that this authority will continue to grow as the peaceable commonwealth is established, with justice and righteousness for all and forever. This promise is spoken anew to people in every age, to those who have lived under oppression or in dark oppression, to the hungry and ill and imprisoned. The birth we celebrate offers hope in word made flesh, who comes among us to heal and walk this way with us. The mantle of authority on his shoulders begins in the swaddling clothes of a child born in the night, Mary's child. She called him Jesus. That mantle of authority continues to grow through a life offered for others, raised into new life, and passed on to new generations. Wherever justice and righteousness are done, that authority continues to grow, born on the strong shoulders of the Prince of Peace. So do something to exercise your authority this Christmas season by alleviating someone's burden. Help them transform the yoke of whatever is oppressing them into the mantle of Christ's authority in and for their lives. And when you do, you will discover, you will discover three things. You will discover the mantle of Christ's authority in your own life growing stronger. You will discover what the peace of Christ that passes all understanding really means. And you will become, as the Bible describes it, the grace of God. All you have to do is illuminate Christ's peace to the world. May you discover that humble authority, born again on the edges of the world's notice. May that royal inheritance and authority of the stable be born in you. Enliven your heart and rest on your shoulders. Buried abroad in peace this year and throughout all the ages. Amen and amen. Would you join me now as we go to God in prayer? Oh God, we have heard the wonderful words of Scripture that teach us for a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, you who are the Wonderful Counselor, grant wisdom, to political leaders to govern with kindness and care, to campaigners who creatively challenge injustice and 
inequality, and to peacemakers to find lasting solutions to protracted conflict. May the light of your wisdom dawn in the darkness of selfish ambition. Mighty God, grant courage to those having to escape their homes to find refuge, to those dreading the next violent outburst, and those unsure of the future for their families. May the light of your courage dawn in the darkness of their fear. O oh, everlasting Father, grant us inspiration to imagine a world free from species extinction and climate chaos, to make economic decisions so all the earth may flourish, to commune with creation instead of merely being its consumer. May the light of your inspiration dawn in the darkness of eco-despair. For you, who are the Prince of Peace, grant the peace that silences gunfire and bombs, that stills us to recognize complicit choices, that reconciles war-weary enemies. May the light of your peace dawn in the darkness of conflict. And we pray in the authority of the child that has been born for us, the son given to us this day. May his strength and his love and light of peace be in our lives every day throughout all ages. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. As you are out and about this week, find ways to practice peace for yourselves. Practice peace by setting aside 30 minutes each day in a comfortable place. Turn off all technology and television and just sit there and let God speak to your soul. Find ways to practice peace for others 
by speaking out against wrong and injustice, even if it is at the Christmas table. But also, call someone who may be hurting or feeling lonely this season. Find a way to make someone's life better. Someone who in no way could ever pay you back. Contribute to a homeless shelter, the Salvation Army, the Toys for Tots campaign, or to a family that's hurting this Christmas, and there are a lot more of them this year. Maybe even buy two or three bags of groceries and take them to a food bank. I'll let you in on something profound. When you give peace away, you'll find that you'll have more peace and more contentment in your life. So for the benediction, we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the light has dawned and shines on all people, fill the night left by sadness with messages of peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that peace alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Hum or sing such thong songs as, Do you hear what I hear? Go tell it on the mountain. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. For unto us a child is born. And be reminded that God is at work in the world, and God wants to be at work through you. Go forth in God's love and joy, and you will experience both hope and peace, especially during this Christmas season. And I'll see you again right here Thursday evening for our Christmas Eve service. Blessings to you today. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior.